Hey, how you doing? This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. I've been getting a number of inquiries about this Texan H-501X. I guess a couple of people are thinking about getting themselves one for Christmas or something like that. And uh, so I wanted to revisit this radio and kind of go over some of the details about the radio, both good and bad. Now, there's a lot of information about this radio on YouTube. If you do a search on YouTube for Texan H-501X, you'll see a lot of videos, a lot of videos from Jill's in Canada. Also, if you go to SWLING website, there's a lot of reviews about this radio, Uh, many Good ones by Dan, for instance, Dan Robinson. And also on the Radio J. Allen website, there's a good review of this radio. Lots of information about this radio. I'm going to go over just some details because I've done many videos on this radio already. So let's talk about ergonomics. The size of this radio is pretty big. It's got dual speakers, pretty hefty. The tuning knobs, let me go over here where the tuning knobs are. They are a little recessed and a little, you kind of, what I use is my finger on the end to rotate it, and that works fine for me. Other reviews I've seen, um, they say they struggled with tuning it. With this, I don't have any problems. This um, the fine tuning is a little less recessed. So that that's the tuning knobs. The front panel, for me, is really good, and the reason being is the numbers, the letters, and everything. The buttons are good enough for me to easily touch. In read, when my poor eyesight, sometimes I have reading. Like, for instance, on the PL330, a little radio, which I have right here. Let me show you real quick. Those buttons are hard to press, and some of the reading, some from the lettering, but hard to read for me. But this is a small radio. Big display. Big numbers, lots of information. I won't go into detail on the information that's on display because there's so much information that's provided. Now, the radio does have a kickstand, and I'll show it to you again. It's this metal bale right here. And, unfortunately, it only has, let me stand this up, it only has one position that it locks in, which is fully op- up. So there's no intermediate positions. And if you put it in one of these inter- intermediate positions, the radio is liable to fall over, especially if you're punching on the keyboard. For me, when I put it back on the bail correctly, it's just at the right angle for me. Other people reported that it's too far back or too far forward. I don't have any problems with that. So that's the bail. Keep that in mind. Battery charging. Now this thing, there's a lot of unique features to this radio. And one of the unique features is two batteries that are used individually. So when one battery goes low, you can switch over to the other battery. And they're 18650 batteries. Battery life is a little questionable. I've read where if you play the audio really loud, which I don't do, it will drain the batteries pretty fast. I don't play the audio real loud. So I've not had any problems with battery life at all. Charging. You charge the batteries in the radio, 
used in this USB port right here. Now, the question that I've gotten is, can you power the radio using this USB port so that the batteries don't drain? Well, you actually can, but it does induce some noise. So keep that in mind. You probably don't want to listen to that that way. It may be the particular unit you're using to charge it, how much noise it's created. I have not tested different ways. Like I have a big battery pack that you can use that um, it has no AC on it also. That may eliminate the noise. I don't know. Antenna. It has a very long shortwave FM telescopic antenna. But it does not fully recess down inside like some of the old Sony radios. So it is out there. You could catch something on it. They do. This is something interesting. Again, unique to this radio is they actually label this screw right here is the screw to loosen to take the antenna out completely. And they also label all the screws needed to take the back cover off. Right here is the AB switch for the two batteries. Okay, let's turn our rack around here. And let me look up my notes here as far as any other questions. Okay, we talked about the battery. Talked about battery uh, being discharged if you're playing the audio loud. Say if you're outside and you need to crank it up, you're going to use up that battery. Tuning. This radio, the 501, does not mute when tuning. Some of the newer radios mute when tuning, and I hate that. So that's a big plus for me. Bandwidth. Short wave specifically, bandwidth. The highest bandwidth you can select is 6 kilohertz. I would like to see, like to have seen, 9 as a maximum. But, it's, it's, again, it's not a big deal. But if you want to listen to music on shortwave, you're going to be li limited to a 6 kilohertz bandwidth. Not a big deal. Synchronous detection does work fairly good on this radio compared to like the PL880, which it just doesn't work on a PL880. I very, very seldom, almost never use synchronous detection to lock in a signal on shortwave. I just don't use it, so it doesn't matter to me. That might be very important to you. I talked about the antenna. It does have Bluetooth capability. And it does have a card reader down here on the bottom. You can stick in a memory card. Play to play music off that memory card. I think that's about it as far as the extra details I'd like to provide and answer the questions I've been getting. If you have, oh, one other neat little thing that they do on this radio on the connectors here, they, it actually comes with these black plugs to keep it from getting dust inside. So, you know, like these two, I don't use very often, so I just left the plugs in. This I use quite a bit, so I, I left the plug out. And then there's was also plugs on this side. It also has a connector for using an external FM antenna. That's very unusual. Very unusual. And I think that's about it. I hope I've answered all the questions. And uh, I personally, now I'm no expert, so take everything I've said with a grain of salt. I'm no expert. But I personally 
really like this radio. It's a little expensive, but you get a lot of bang for your buck. So take that for what it's worth. If you have any more questions, please leave it in a comment below and I will answer it or try to answer it for you. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I wish you would. Have a great day. Bye-bye.